an agency and uh, you manage uh, a lot of uh, several people to provide a cutting edge digital strategy to global uh, cooperation across across multiple sectors. So the floor is yours now. Thank you very much and thank you to welcome me here. So it's very nice that I'm uh, following the two previous presentations because what we try to do is actually bridge all the science and the knowledge we have with the actual audience uh, we try to reach out. So uh, I, the title, the subtitle says value and shared benefits beyond communication. And so as Pascal mentioned, I was the, the head of a digital agency, but actually I, I got out of it and founded the synergies four years ago because I wanted to I was working on vaccines issue and uh, I was uh, one of the founder of vaccines today um, and I, I was doing a lot of communication on, on that sense but then I felt we were missing actually what we are trying to do and so actually what we do there is that we are when the comp the issue the societal issue is too complex to be addressed by one organization by one stakeholder group or even by a small group uh, of stakeholders actually we build a platform which is issue centric. And I come back to that in the, the case of break dengue, issue centric is more focused on dengue, not on the vaccines, on dengue. And there is a scientific reason for that. So we have five projects and initially I didn't want to talk about them, but I will talk a little bit about the, the one at the bottom right, patient focused medicine development. Because there actually the whole idea is to uh, start to involve the patient when you develop med new medicines at the very start of the process in, early in process, in early discovery. And because you do that, you have a product that's one, better fit the patient needs, so it's more welcomed when it comes to the market, but also there is also a, already like 15 or 70 years of collaboration with patients, so instead of pushing something, actually you have something which is weighted on the market. I'll come back to that. Now, for all our projects, we have three key pillar activities. The first one is the uh, issue-centric ecosystem. And so this is the idea, and I will make an analogy a little bit later on, on that front, is that if you don't have an environment which is ready to uh, welcome your new solution like a vaccine, then you might have the best vaccines ever, or even a good vaccine, but then it will not work. And so you have to work on the environment, and I think uh, on, unfortunately, on dengue right now, we have a very good example of that. Um, so we are building the environment and that's we, in, we need our partners to, ag to agree that we'll have to invest in that. And an environment is not set up like that. I think the vaccines uh, safe net is a, a very good example. This is the type of activity we will be doing and I will illustrate that. The second part is the strong storytelling and identity. We have to be out there with a, a very nice storyline focusing on the issue. I'll come back to that again, but uh, a very nice storyline and a, a very strong communication. So for example, Break Dengue, uh, we have a chief editor, which, uh, Gary Finnegan, you saw him on the screen already, he's one of the advisors of uh, the, the Vaccine Safe Net. Um, uh, and actually we choose him on purpose, a journalist, completely independent of the process. So he is running his editorial board in complete autonomy. And actually he's bringing all the information good and less good about dengue uh, and actually as a journalist he brings the, uh, the bigger picture in one place which is a very important point and then we develop specific initiatives for on issue of patient centricity for example we have to develop a methodology on how to make it happen across the life cycle of medicine development that methodology is a specific project on break dengue there is the e-barometer that i will present in a minute so that's what we do on all our projects and so on patient engagement uh, I think we have to think about how can we involve the patient, but with the vaccines as a question, who are the patient, but how can we involve the, the future patients or the one that actually were patient in the past into the process so they can start to, to work with us and become actually partners uh, also in the communication of the benefits. And so very quickly, when I talk about an ecosystem with partners on that project, that's the partners that we have. And you can see that uh, you have patient organizations, uh, you have uh, organizations that are more like health technology assessment, you have pharma industry, uh, and one of the key goals uh, for them, for example, is to invest in this environment to make sure that there is less waste, faster product to the market, uh, and, uh, and better interest also for them. So it's not only better benefit for the patient, it's for all stakeholders around the table. Now, break dengue. 
So we have the same type of platform uh, for break dengue. Uh, you have the partners, maybe it's a bit small there, uh, but we have a good mix of uh, NGOs, pharma companies, uh, academics uh, around the table. Uh, and actually in a fragmented world, so there is no single solution that will be dengue today. Uh, so we, we have prevention, we have vector control, we have repellents, we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have one vaccine, others coming, we also have an antiviral coming, but none of it will address dengue in isolation. And so the idea is to be this global platform to actually coordinate and uh, bring all of that together. We have a very strong governance in uh, ensuring uh, independence. So in blue, you have actually the decision body. Our partners are members, they elect a board, and that board is deciding uh, the strategy uh, of the project. In yellow, you have the operations, and I'm heading the, the operations as for break dengue, in which we have experts that help us on the day-to-day, -day, but and you also have the, the usual services that you would have in any organization, communication, finance, and so on. And so that's how we organize our project. Now, in terms of, uh, I'm missing one slide, but uh, I will explain it. So we have uh, different activities before I come to the barometer. So we have 60 key opinion leaders from all, the world, the all around the world that are actually helping us shaping the agenda in terms of communication and also relay the information at the local level. We have an online platform with 1,200 uh, experts related to dengue. We have, um, uh, we have done campaigns for four years now, awareness campaigns. We have uh, an, uh, the e-barometer that I will explain and we have participated in hackathons uh, in different places. Uh, so the last one on the right uh, is in Sri Lanka a couple of weeks ago and I will, I will cover that. The pictures in the middle is actually a network of 1,000 students from all over the, the world. Mm -hmm. So we work with ISEC, the global organization of, of students. And actually, we came to them and we proposed them a, a project around dengue. And they will turn into ambassador that will go in NGOs at the local level to spread the message. And again, we try, to, we try not to be on an online platform only. We need to be on site. We have to try all the different channels so we can influence and share the message about dengue. The last message about dengue we use is don't let dengue break you. And I come back to the issue centric approach. Actually, it worked 10 times better in terms of conversion rate. So how many people click on the message from our communication, we measure everything we do. And, and actually we understood afterwards that it's because we focus on the threats. Uh, so when you, if we were talking about a vaccine, actually we, we will never get that type of, because it, we try to push a solution, but then the, the, it's for all of us, we focus first on the threats. And that's actually why it's our su survival reflex. Uh, all of us are working like that. So if you push me a vaccine solution, I will wonder what are the risks linked to the vaccines. If you push to me the message about the disease, and then the vaccines comes in a second uh, aspect as a solution, I have a different way to reflect to it. And that's why we take a deng uh, break dengue approach uh, and not a vaccine directly approach. Um, so the message works very well. And actually, we have built a whole storyline about the fact that actually with dengue, you might die, but you will also, you might disappear from your regular activities. Uh, so that's the idea of the visual. So you, you have a vi we have a visual with a truck driver that, that disappears from the truck and so on and so on. And actually we get there with what is the threat? What is the risk linked to dengue? Now, I'm talking about communication, but we were thinking, we were aware of the work of uh, Mauricio and also away from the WHO recommendation, which is actually to build further on the surveillance system, building on web platform, connecting different sources of information and uh, data source as well. And as well as working on early warning system. And actually we connected the dots because what we have a community, we have 200,000 people on Facebook as an example. We have this contact with the community. So if we have data and if we have predictions, we actually have a channel where we can reach out proactively. So we have worked with uh, Mauricio and his team uh, on uh, this publication. So um, I go directly to the result because you are now familiar with the type of table that uh, the Mauricio is uh, producing. So you have at the top uh, in light blue, the Argo correlation. So the model by the Mauricio's team. And actually you can see we have done that in five countries. 
and we are from 82 or 83 uh, person to 97 person correlation two weeks in advance. So I come back. So we are not in uh, tw uh, in, in, 20, um, in 2009 or to 2013 anymore. We are in real time and we predict two weeks in advance. So I think we have to look at the progress that has been done. Um, and so this is one for one source of information. And we were wondering, OK, so it works for flu in the US, but does it work in a country with a different disease, with a different internet penetration and all the different parameters that you can see on the screen? And actually, we got these results, um, uh, as you can see. I will not explain too much about the model, but the correlation you have seen, how high is the correlation for one source of data. Um, and um, uh, so it proved to be a right model, also in absolute values, because correlation is one thing, but absolute value is another thing to control the quality. Now, what do we do as Greg Dengue with something like that? And so that's, I think, important for the, the theme of the, the conference. So basically, we were thinking if we can get uh, that level of correlation when people type in Google without knowing that actually we capture information, they don't know they share something, what about when we ask them some question? And so we built Dengue Track, and you see the map actually is the, the reports done uh, through Dengue Track. So green is you have not been exposed to Dengue, orange is someone, a relative has been ex exposed to, the, to Dengue, and in red is when you or your family has been exposed to dengue and it has been confirmed by a diagnostic. Self-reported case, right? So we have built that chat. And actually, you come on our website, you search on Google, you want information about dengue, and uh, you click uh, on the Break Dengue website to reach out to a website. And what's happening, you have this chat there. And uh, we see in this case that you are connected from Mumbai in India. and. Um, uh, we have uh, data, that because we pre-encode data in the system, we have data that there is a problem right now in Mumbai. And then you have a uh, multiple choice. In this case, the person replies yes. And then who has, uh, who has dengue? Is it uh, your family? Or in this case, he replies, it's my family. Uh, are you sure it was dengue? Yes, it was uh, diagnosed by, by a doctor. So the person exchange, it takes like five seconds or six seconds to do that. It's a chat like you would do a chat on Facebook. Uh, and then we say thank you. And we give you at that moment, we give you a piece of information which allow you to protect uh, the, the, the rest of your family not to get dengue uh, and to say what you can do and what you should be doing, what if you have not done it. So we have a very specific piece of information, the right information at the right time. And so with that, actually, suddenly, because well, I show you a result, we have done three iterations. Uh, initially, it was just a form, tell us about dengue, and nobody was doing that. And now one person out of three that come to a web platform is actually using the chat right now. And this is something that you can embed on your website. So the, the, the left pin that you see, you can embed that on your website and use it. And it works very well to build the map that you see on the right. Now, you receive that toolkit. It means also that we can capture your information. And if we capture your inf uh, information, you actually becoming a dengue tracker. So you apply to become a dengue tracker, which means that one, we can alert you. And I'm coming back to the alert system recommended by WHO. We have the community, we capture the community, we grow it, and actually we can alert you if we map a, um, a dengue risk in your area at a given moment. So we can give you an alert system. We give value, so we don't communicate. We have done already a toolkit that fits your needs, but we also turn you into uh, someone that we are connected to where you can receive information and you can keep reporting to us as well about dengue. So you become an activist. So that's an example of the, the different toolkits. So you have the toolkit for the traveler, you have the toolkit if you dengue is under the same roof, if dengue is away, but you want to keep it away. But it's very often the same very basic information. We talk about the lay public, but shaped in a completely different format. Now, we have this, uh, so we have a new data source, crowd surveillance, uh, first of all. We have a way to engage and to add value, so we are not selling something. We are not pushing a message. We are actually engaging and replying to a need, which is completely different. Now, we have as a project right now, uh, with different partners, uh, including 
um, including the team of Mauricio, including um, Avia GIS for weather forecasts and um, Jans Johnson & Johnson and Sanofi. We have a project where actually we want to connect all of that because one of the key issues is that all these predictive models are floating uh, and we have the ecosystem in which we can connect all of that. So you can see so you can see we have worked with a search request. Now we are in contact with the main search engine globally, where actually it's about search behavior. So what's happening before you get to the doctor? You look for symptoms. What hap what's happening when you go to the doctor and you come back and you have a disease and you're actually searching more information about the disease? Actually, they have been able to, to identify all of these elements to turn that into prediction models, and they do that at the zip code level and uh, globally. And so that's the type of data that we will input in the system. We have the vector data, and that's where Avia uh, GIS is uh, joining us. Of course, the official, ca official case, and we will start with these four, but actually we will build a database where we can welcome rapid diagnostic tests where we can um, uh, welcome other weather forecast uh, data or uh, other vector control data. So actually, we are building a model, not one pilot. Uh, we are building a model that can grow. So after that, we have this database that will first aggregate all of dat the data and build on the algorithm. So Mauricio explained that when you bring different uh, sources together, the overall correlation is bigger. We aim to be in month in terms of prediction. So that's the goal we set for, for the team. And actually, so you have the processing the data there, but then we will turn that into maps and uh, we will visualize the data at the global and national level. But we still are part of an ecosystem. So actually what we will do is to build uh, interaction platform. Does that work? Yeah. So we will build interaction platforms. So actually, I was in Sri Lanka, and the problem in Sri Lanka is uh, the reporting, as we know. So we, we, t we worked with um, uh, the health authorities, and so they need first, at their level, a dashboard of what's happening uh, with the data we know. So they actually can work with the health inspectors that go on site with clear instruction where you have to go, what you have to check. They can report back that information in the system. And so for the moment in Sri Lanka, we don't talk about vaccines or anything like that. We just uh, breeding sites, what do we do about it? And so they will report breeding sites and they will show actually uh, all cases when they meet the population. But actually what they will do, uh, we will empower them with this uh, platform and they will feed back a new set of data in the system. That's from the field. That's one element. But also when we start to combine all this information, we have more information for the individuals. Actually, we had signals, the health spec inspector came to your neighborhood and he confirmed there is a problem. So actually, we can start to alert very specifically people there. Um, also, the case of the local LCP is for the moment in Sri Lanka. When we asked the doctor we visited to show us the form, it took, it took him 10 minutes to find the form he was supposed to fill in when uh, he, there is a dengue case. It takes seven days for that case, if the doctor does it, it takes seven days for that to be actually reported at the uh, public health level. Uh, so actually, that, that's really a broken system. We cannot rely on that data. So now we will create an interface as well for the doctors when they can work on that uh, and, and just push a button. I have three keys in my practice today. End of the day, you, have, you push one button and that's super easy, that's what we want to do. So all of that actually will feed back into the, the another level of sources. So uh, the dengue tracker, the, so the people that will report, so the, it's um, uh, dengue surveillance. We have uh, the case from the ACPs and we have the confirmed in interventions from um, uh, the health inspectors on the field. So we really try to build a whole ecosystem where we have an interface and a solution that brings value for all different stakeholders in the process. Now, one of the discussion we have all the time when we, t we discuss with people on site, like, okay, very good, you do that for dengue, but why only dengue? So you have the, the same, the visual is representing the same thing, except that we are ready to build an ecosystem. We use that as a pilot, but we are ready to build a si system for, uh, an ecosystem for Zika, for malaria, for flu, for whatever you want. We have a whole model ready for that where we, we connect all the, 
all the, all the stakeholders and all the information in one place. And why not? We have a break dengue, but we can also then be the platform for vaccines only because some of our audiences will connect from the vaccines channel. We might have uh, someone who just want a nap with all disease in one places, and that might be very easy. And so that's all the things that having a central database like this one will allow. We use dengue as a place to practice it, but actually we can extend that and add a lot more value if we make it multi-disease later on. So now I just wanted to pick up on the comment uh, you did a bit earlier about uh, the reactiveness uh, of, all of, all of all of this. So we talk about vaccination and if uh, in marketing terms, actually what the anti-vaccines are doing, they are doing a viral uh, guerrilla tactics. And if they are the virus, we need antibodies for that. And the problem from the beginning is that we think we are in this room, the antibodies. We are not the antibodies. We are way too small, not enough uh, to be there. And actually we need to build, when I talk about ecosystem, we need to take the pro vaccines on the field, not people like you and I, but people like parents, teachers, all these people that are in touch every day. I think Tin said it yesterday, we need to be much more out and discuss with people. But that's what we have to do before the disease is there, before the virus is there. And so that's what we are missing in all our communication strategy right now. We do fantastic posters and things like that, but we have nobody to relate on the field. And so when you build a community like that with dengue trackers, when you reply someone as a question because a parent, actually these people, you can turn them into your ambassadors, but we need to invest in that to make it happen. So I think if one thing we have to, to think and change how we think about all of that is how do we bring antibodies for vaccination program uh, into the whole ecosystem? And so that's what we are trying to do with Break Dengue. Thank you.